Hello, everyone. Let me first say that it's a great honor to receive this award, and I'm very sorry that I can't attend the ceremony today. As many of you know, it's not really in my nature to miss an opportunity to celebrate with colleagues and friends, especially when there's food involved. The fact of the matter, however, is that I'm spending my sabbatical overseas in Germany, where I'm working with colleagues at the University of Freiburg, which is located just on the outskirts of the Black Forest. It's a very interesting time to be a migration researcher in Europe. You've probably heard a lot about Germany in the news lately, especially in the context of Europe's refugee crisis. Germany has received more than 1 million refugees in 2015, which represents far more than 1% of the country's total population. And in this regard, Canada is also making a valuable contribution. Our colleagues right here at Ryerson, under the leadership of Ratna Amidbar, have spearheaded an initiative called Lifeline Syria, which is helping to sponsor Syrian refugees to come to the GTA. And Ryerson's own students and staff are aiming to bring 75 Syrian families to Greater Toronto. Migration has become one of the defining issues of our times. It is not only a political and economic challenge, but it also affects us personally. And this is why migration is such an important research topic. This map, which you can hopefully see now, shows migrants who died um, or who went missing trying to reach Europe in 2015. In that year alone, there were more than 4,000 tragic deaths. And more are dying around the world, in the desert of Arizona, the waters off the coast, coast of Australia, the jungle between Thailand and Malaysia, and elsewhere in the world. Many of these deaths could have been prevented. While I'm here in Germany, I'm finishing a book, and it will be called Migration Borders Freedom. And this this book brings together a decade and a half of research trying to find solutions to this particular problem. These solutions can take many forms. They range from the practical to the utopian. Lifeline Syria is a great example of a practical solution. Other solutions include, for example, immigration policies and programs to let people cross borders legally, and then also to let them stay legally in the country. For example, um, the city of Toronto, you may remember, two years ago declared itself a sanctuary city, accepting immigrants who are not supposed to be in Canada as fellow Tor Torontonians. More far-reaching solutions suggest a world of open borders. This world, in this world, everyone would possess the freedom of mobility, not just a few selected and privileged people. Academic theories suggest that we should have open borders for a number of reasons. Economists, for example, tell us that borders distort the labor market. To liberal theorists, borders infringe on fundamental freedoms that all of us have and enforce a kind of birthright and birth, birth privilege. To anti-racists and feminist scholars, borders are a means of oppression. And a more utopian solution suggests that we should not have borders to begin with and that we should get rid of nation states that have borders. An additional issue is that once migrants arrive, they need to settle, they need to be part of the society, and we need to facilitate a process where they can become one of us. Addressing these wide-ranging issues requires a comprehensive research approach. And at Ryerson, with the Ryerson Center for Immigration Settlement, or RCIS, we have just the right institution to pursue a wide-ranging and comprehensive research agenda. We have more than 40 affiliated faculty members. Um, and with the help of these colleagues, RCIS is having an impact on multiple fronts. First, we are creating a vision that links migration and settlement to issues of social justice and human liberation. Second, we are cultivating partnerships with the settlement community that enable us 
to apply our research right here in the GTA and also nationwide. And third, with the Graduate Program in Immigration and Settlement Studies, we link research with education to develop the future leaders in our field. Research, of course, is a collective effort, and without a nurturing environment, all this research wouldn't be possible. And on this note, I'd like to thank my colleagues, my colleagues at RCIS who have been an inspiring team to work with, my colleagues in the Graduate Program in Immigration Settlement Studies and the Department of Geography, and in the Faculties of Arts, the Faculty of Community Services, and across campus. And of course, our Vice President for Research and Innovation, Wendy Sukier. I'm grateful for your ongoing support and your encouragement. Thank you very much for this award, and I'm deeply honored to receive it.